Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. This channel is dedicated to finding out whether I really do know it all or not. Make sure you like and subscribe and make sure you ask questions in the comments or at my email address, which is at the end of the video. So make sure you watch the video. Without further ado, let's find out what my wife has picked for the question of the day. Drum roll, please. <clears throat> oh boy. <laughs> okay, A, this is going to be a challenging question, and B, I hope I don't completely butcher the pronunciation of this. All right, the question is, how do the fossil findings at Jebel Irhud change what we know about the evolution of humans? I hope I'm saying that right, Jebel Irhud. All right, so, <laughs> yikes. <laughs> this is a uh, anthropology question, I guess. So, um, oh gosh, if I'm remembering correctly, Jebel Irhud is in like Northern Africa, maybe near Morocco. I hope that's correct. And as far as what they discovered there, they were obviously the remains of humans and they were, <laughs> God, I don't know. I'm gonna have to come up with something here. I would say that they, um, this isn't Lucy because Lucy was discovered further south. I think this has to do with the Neanderthal. Um, or, or may, uh, sorry, I think it has, sorry, <laughs> I think it has to do with the African diaspora. And I think what it's talking about is the fact that humans made it further or were more developed in, in different areas of Africa, like, and had spread out more uh, earlier than um, breachers, theoreticians or anthropologists had thought before they made this discovery. And if I'm remembering correctly, it was dated to somewhere in the 400,000 year old range, I think, ish. Um, before I make a complete fool out of myself, I'm going to go look it up the answer and we will find out like just how bad I did. <laughs> we'll find out. Okay, just a sec. All right, I actually did better than I thought I would have done anyway. So Jebel Irhud is n is close to Safi in Morocco, so I got that part right. That's good. <laughs> it was, um, there were fossils that were discovered there in 1960. Originally, the fossils were thought to be Neanderthals. Hey, good for me on that one too, but they turned out to be Homo sapiens. And they are roughly 300,000 years old. So I'm that. <laughs> okay. So generally speaking, I think I got the right answer in terms of like the stuff. As far as what changed about their ideas about man, I have to look a little bit further. So I'm going to give myself <laughs> a thumbs up on that first part. And now I'm going to look and see a little bit further what exactly changed in terms of things. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay, so a <laughs> little more research here. So the, the main difference, it wasn't actually a diaspora thing. What it was was that the, the idea of the human brain having developed earlier versus later, I guess that's the main thing that it changed. So the idea is that, um, let's see if I can read this off a little bit. Um, so, uh, you know, the idea was that evolutionary changes in the brain shape, like the shape of the skull, are associated with the gen genetic changes of the brain's organization, interconnection, and development, and reflect the adaptive changes in the way the brain functions. So, um, I'll also post the link here in the uh, description below. So, basically, the idea here is that the, um, the shape, even though these, these people were eventually identified as homo sapiens the shapes of their brains was quite different than modern homo sapiens like our heads and so the changes in thought were that um that as opposed to homo sapiens kind of like coming out <laughs> fully developed and being homo sapiens that there was a lot of development within our own subgenus of homo sapiens to um to create the modern look that we have now and the modern brain functionality and so forth so that's the main difference between um between previous thinking and thinking in that light so yeah so anyway <laughs> i didn't have the exact rationale for why it was important quite there but i think i think i did actually pretty good considering that i even had the basic idea of where <laughs> jebel or earhood is considering that i am not an anthropologist by any means so there we go Alrighty, so I've done a little extra research on this because I felt like it was worthwhile to do so. So I read a few articles and so forth about the findings and so forth. And actually, it turns out that I'm a little more correct than I thought I was in the first place. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the fossil findings actually do have to do with um, a kind of a diaspora. Uh, essentially, what happened was in the 1960s when the fossils were originally discovered, the estimation was that they were 150,000-ish years old, <clears throat> and therefore um, 
that you know it still maintained that like Ethiopia or that area of Africa was the place where uh, Homo sapiens began, and then they spread out over time, and that made sense. But more recent dating within the last few years has indicated that the humans in the uh, uh, Morocco area were more like 300,000 years old, which means that either human beings were co-developing in a bunch of places or the diaspora, the, the, the extension of humans out of um, sort of northeastern Africa to the western part of Africa and perhaps other places happened substantially longer ago than... Um, people thought so in any case it's sort of there's a there's a kind of a term of like the quote-unquote garden of eden not the biblical one but you know where where anthropologists thought that uh, human civilization developed and it turns out that that perhaps is not correct that that you know the ethiopia area where human civilization or human excuse me human beings were supposedly <clears throat> first came about and, and began to exist as homo sapiens uh, it's more complicated than that. <laughs> That's basically the, the short answer of it all. So anyway, I'll put a couple of article links in the description below just so you can look at that if you're interested. But yes, there is actually some interesting um, aspects of the way that human beings traveled and migrated and came into existence from our ancestors and so forth and uh, everything's a bit more complicated than we thought that's that's the long and short of the whole thing anyway yeah so thanks for that question and make sure you like and subscribe and make sure if you haven't make sure you asked a question or two in the comments or at dr know it all knows at gmail.com my wife will ferret out the interesting ones and she will ask me the questions and we'll see how i do next time until then thank you bye bye